Oh my god, Femboy69, you're in the gym? The first time ever. Yes, Femboy69, we're so proud of you. But then he kind of looks at all the other guys and they're all a lot bigger than him. He starts to feel ashamed about his body. He starts to feel insecure. Maybe I should just go home. No, Femboy69, you just got to the gym. But just as he's about to leave, he feels a hand on his shoulder. It's you. You're different. You're not like Femboy69. You're on self-improvement. You've been training every day, meditating, going into cold showers, pursuing your purpose, and improving your mental health. But you don't look down upon Femboy69. No. You put a hand on his shoulder and you say to him, come on, man, let's go work out together. I want to tell you a story about something that happened two plus years ago. Now, I remember it was on a holiday. I had been working for about a year non-stop. So I had like three months of holiday paid leave and I spent it all at once. So I went to Thailand, my home country. I haven't been back there since I was two years old. I was 17 at the time. No, I think I was 18 at the time. But first time I was going back to my hometown, literally to the house I grew up in. And it was amazing. It was actually really nice walking through the house I grew up in. It's almost like I was going back to my roots. But then something happened. I met a couple of friends. Well, at the time I didn't know who they were, but then we became friends, you know, and they would show me about Thailand because, you know, I didn't know. I'd been, hadn't been there in a really long time. And these friends then introduced me into something known as marijuana weed. Now over there, completely legal, no restrictions whatsoever. In the UK, it's very much not the case, it's very much illegal, and at that time in my life I was young, I never really did anything like that. I drank alcohol, but never ever did anything sort of on the line of drugs. So this was the first time. And I remember on the very first day I met these people, on the very second day they introduced it to me, and for the next three months I was on it every single day day. I would get up at 4pm. I would walk down to the local bar. It's a two minute walk. I would see my friends already there and they would have one rolled up have beers already stacked from early in the morning. And then we would start and we would keep going on until 5 a.m. Because over there in Thailand, you know, throughout the midnight to 5 a.m., it's still like 20, 30 degrees. You can sit outside and, you know, it's actually not cold. And then I would go to bed, wake up at 4 p.m., repeat. Now, there were some days I kind of went down to the local bar just to get a food, just to get a nice meal. But they were always there and they always kind of made it sure that I did it with them. To be honest, at the time, I just didn't have enough strength to say no. So I gave in. I gave in to the pressure. Now these friends, I don't talk to them anymore and the reason is is because I quit everything. I quit all of it. And then that's when they started to show their true colours and I started to realise that they weren't friends. They'd only ever want to meet up or me to come back to Thailand so they could smoke more. You know, when I left Thailand and quit everything, they were like, oh no, come back, we'll smoke more. And I was like, well, I can't told you I quit. Do you not care about like the fact that I was so mentally deprived, that I was so mentally unhealthy, unstable, depressed almost because of it, that I wanted to quit? Yeah, but no, you go through that phase all the time, you know? But just come back, smoke more. They didn't care at all. We don't message anymore because I don't do that anymore. And it made me realize that how difficult it was to find and make good quality friends nowadays. Like high quality friends, you know? So the friendship that revolves around meditating, self-improvement, going to the gym, pursuing your purpose, kind of like not going to the party life, not drinking all the time, not doing weed, you know, kind of that kind of friendship that revolves around that. It's very hard to find that. Here is my complete guide for you that literally I used. I only got like two close friends, right? Only two close male friends, but that's all I need. And we are all revolved around self-improvement. We go on hikes, we go on journeys in the forest and the woods to find new places to sort of like camp. We're all going to the gym. We're all quit all the bad habits. Maybe that's something that you really want right now. Here is my complete guide and you're going to need everything that I say. So stick to the end. Now, there is one main reason why you can't make those high quality friends right now. You know, that friendship that revolves around hiking, meditation, pursuing your purpose, going to the gym, getting physically healthy, getting mentally healthy. And that is because of the bad influences. Now, there is this sort of like, sort of scaling that I like. It is better to be alone than to be around the bad influences, the bad friends. And then it's a million times better to be with the good influencers than both of those options. So if I had the choice to be with bad influencers, bad friends, or alone, I would choose being alone. The first thing you need to do is get rid of those bad influencers, and there is a, re there is a huge reason why. 
just stuttered then, I just couldn't speak. There's a huge reason why you need to get rid of the bad friends, the bad influences. And that is because people who are on the good influence, right? They're in that sort of high quality friendship that's revolved around self-improvement. Those people do not want to be friends with you if you are hanging out with the bad influences. They just hands down will not want to be around you. That is why it's so much better to be alone than with the bad influences because I much rather being alone than being mentally depressed. So the first thing you need to do, and this might be the hardest thing to do, you might click off the video and go make excuses for yourself. This is a very hard thing to do and that is cut out the bad influences, the bad friends. You need to cut out the bad friends. At that time when I was in Thailand, I felt like I needed to have those friends because I, if I didn't, I would be alone and have no one else. Little did I know that actually it was probably better to be alone than to be with them because maybe I wouldn't have gotten so depressed, so addicted to the drugs. So you need to get rid of the bad influences. But then what's the next thing you should do? Continue down this path. Now, where on earth are you going to find other men who are literally on the same goal, on the same journey, on the same path as you right now? Someone who's watched a couple self-improvement videos, someone who wants to take a better control of their life and start improving their life. How do you find other guys like that? You know, maybe you've done the hard step, right? You cut off all the bad friends, all the bad influences. And now you want to start finding people who are of high quality friendship, who are on the good influence. But where do you find them? Well, if you're looking for friends who are revolved around meditating, journaling, going to the gym, focusing on their mental health, focusing on their physical health. If you're trying to find other guys like that, they're probably going to be in that environment. Those kind of guys are probably going to be in the gym. So, all you need to do is literally continue down the same path that you are currently on, because eventually you will meet these people. If you're walking down this path, right, this path of self-improvement, you're walking, you're walking, you're walking, eventually you will come across someone else who's walking the same direction and the same path. Now you have the choice to either walk past him or awkwardly walk behind him, or just go up and say something. You're both walking in the same direction, same goal, may as well walk together. So the next time that you are in this environment, you know, you're on a walk, on a hike, you see some other guy who's on a hike, or you see someone who's in the gym, who's kind of close to your age, and he looks kind of fun, you know, and you're in the gym, and it's only you and this one, one other guy, just go up and say hi. The next time you're in the gym, just try and say hi to as many more people as you can, because you will genuinely be surprised about how many say hello back because they're just like you. It took me a long time to understand this, but when I did, it probably made the biggest amount of difference. You know, my two closest friends right now, their names are Romeo and AJ. They're literally like a part of my brotherhood. They're a part of my tribe, right? Do you know where I met these guys? At the gym, on self-improvement. Literally, just in the gym, working out. Saw one other guy, went up and said hello. Got into a conversation. We ended up becoming a bit more friendly, you know, and we were talking more, and then we started to realize that we're both doing the same things. Oh, you're, you're also on self-improvement? Oh, sick, man. Me too. You also go meditating? Gee, me, me too, man. You're crash journaling too? No, no way. <gasps> you also go on hikes? You also go punch a tree? Oh, no, just me? Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. yeah, actually, I was doing my morning training this morning on like a metal pole and my fucking knuckle. I think I've like fractured my knuckle because it really hurts. I'm, I'm getting sidetracked. <laughs> if you want to see what I'm talking about, uh, you can check out my YouTube shorts. I've been posting daily on there. Literally, with these two other closest friends who are literally a part of my brotherhood and tribe now, I just met them from doing the same things that I was doing, that they were doing. I met them on the path of self-improvement. When I was walking down this path and they were walking down the same path, instead of walking past them, I went up and said hello. So the next time you're in the gym, you're working out, it's chest and tries, you're pushing to your limit and you throw the weights away and you see another guy, right? And you kind of just want to go up and just say hi, do it. Go up and say hi because he will probably say hello back. He'll probably get into a conversation with him. You guys might find out that you guys are on the same things. You guys both meditate. You guys both are on self-improvement. You're both trying to fix your mental health. And then suddenly that's a friendship you've made because he's just like you. You just needed to be the one to go up and say something, to take action. Obviously this may not always be the case. You know, there have been times I've gone up to the gym and uh, I've done this, tried to say hello as many to as many people as possible, guys and girls and you know, and there, there was one guy 
guy who I said hello. He was a lot bigger. And I was like, damn, man, how'd you get shoulders like that? What the fuck? We ended up becoming friends. And then it turned out that he was a complete degenerate and he was smoking and doing drugs. I was, uh, well, haha. <laughs> I misjudged that. <laughs> but, um, you know, that happens, you know? We don't talk as much anymore. And I told him about the things that I was doing and that maybe he should try getting onto the positive things. And he said he wants to. And I think he actually has started to try. So, and you know, seeing me literally help someone in person like that, it's a, it's a magical thing. It's genuinely a magical thing. Next time you're in the gym, just say hello to as many people as possible. You would be surprised by how many people are just like you. This is probably the best thing that helped me make more friends. High quality, good quality friends that actually care about my health. But that kind of makes sense. Like what I've just told you is be more social go out and say hello more. That sounds like really stupid advice, but the thing is that kind of makes sense. To make more friends, high quality friends, you have to be more social. You have to practice being more social. Well, yeah, it's kind of obvious. The most important thing during this is just remember, stay consistent. Staying consistent, you will meet other people. I was on self-improvement for over a year before I met other people that were on self-improvement, but I stayed consistent no matter what, and I didn't give up, and I did meet other people. You are guaranteed to meet us as someone else that you could genuinely become friends for life, a brotherhood. Whether that's in two days, two weeks, or two years, it will happen. The most important thing is just remember, stay consistent, all right? You 100% got this. 100%. As always, if you are starting to make a change to your life, you are starting to make an improvement, take back control, but you genuinely have no idea where to start, or begin. This channel, this community, I will do everything that I can to give you all the resources from my experiences that will literally allow you to take off and take your own path. So subscribe if you want to see more content like this. As always, stay consistent and don't give up. You know, it's a, oh, I think there's a spider on my head. Oh, shit. Um, comment down below if you remember this tree. Only the OGs will like remember like this recording tree. We're getting back to recording here. This shirt also makes my biceps look fucking huge. All right, I'm getting distracted. Self-improvement gets...